This week we profile the former Sun editor Kelvin McKenzie, also known as Kelly Pops. I think it's quite clear that some people would regard him as a psychopath or a sociopath. Did you have any particular or any regard to issues such as privacy? Not really, no. I think the thing he'd hate me saying about him most is underneath all that, he's a real softy. Kelvin Calder Mackenzie was born in 1946 in Thanet in Kent. Both his parents, Ian and Mary, were journalists. They had three children, all sons, and Kelvin was the eldest. He and his brothers were sent to a minor public school in south-east London. Kelvin Mackenzie did not shine academically. At the start, we were both put in the fast stream and he only lasted for six or seven weeks until half-term when there was a bit of a reorganisation. Kelvin Mackenzie left with one O-level in English literature. He decided to follow in his parents' footsteps, starting off as a cub reporter in a local rag. Then he moved to the Ferrari news agency. Chris Horry is author of Stick It Up Your Punter, the uncut story of the Sun newspaper. Ferrari's news agency was legendary in the industry, particularly then, and it really was the fast lane into Fleet Street because of their access to all this great copy from the East End crime scene. They would sit there with their shorthand in the courts in East London doing murders, robberies, gangland violence, and that was the kind of stuff that was really in demand in the News of the World and the other big-selling tabloids. So if you'd had your spell at Ferraris, you'd really served your time. You were a made man. You'd been blooded. He didn't look back. Moving from local papers to nationals, in 1978 he moved to the New York Post, owned by the media mogul Rupert Murdoch. And in 1981, Kelvin McKenzie was appointed the editor of The Sun. It marked a new era for the paper. He really was an anti-establishment person and the old guard he quickly turned on and turned over. I was amazed at his energy, at his commitment. The sun took off under his editorship. The paper really became a sort of typographical riot. Headline writing, graphics, photo montages. Freddy Star ate my hamster! It's Paddy Pants Down. Up yours, Dolores. He really didn't mind to be offended whether it was the Queen by not turning up to a, a meeting that she called of all editors. He was the only one to snub it. All Argentinians, all Liverpudlians, all Scotsmen, all Welshmen, all the middle classes. It didn't matter. He hated virtually everyone at some stage or another. But there was one person who Kelvin Mackenzie couldn't afford to hate. Here's Chris Horry. The relationship between Kelvin McKenzie and Rupert Murdoch was one of the closest and most important in the whole of the British media. At a personal level, they saw eye to eye on almost everything. It was said that Murdoch breathed out and Kelvin would breathe in and vice versa. Kelvin McKenzie left the Sun in 1994 and soon after abandoned the Murdoch empire to join the Mirror Group in charge of live TV. Chris Horry again. Kelvin tried to make live TV a televisual version of The Sun, but when you come to key features like page three, I mean, how do you do that with moving pictures? So he came up with the idea of topless darts, and they had a Christmas special of um, topless darts on ice. And they had a city tipster who stripped as she revealed the share prices, bouncing weather dwarves, and the most famous character... My name is Ashley Hames. I was the original news bunny. Live news on the hour. Being news bunny involved leaping around behind the newsreader in a rabbit costume. 